those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this. We will not forgive. We will not forget. Flags now lowered outside the White House and across the country in honor of 13 U.S. service members killed during a devastating attack in Afghanistan. President Biden now vowing to find those responsible. And here's what the Kabul airport looks like right now. Despite the attack this morning, evacuations out of Afghanistan have resumed. The U.S. remains committed to its withdrawal in just four days. CBS 4's Bradley Blackburn begins our team coverage with the latest from Afghanistan. U.S. military commanders say they're on alert for more violence by the Islamic State at the airport in Kabul. Yesterday, twin suicide attacks killed more than a dozen American service members and wounded more than a dozen others. It was the deadliest day for the U.S. military in over a decade. We will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. President Biden said the withdrawal of American citizens, U.S. troops, and Afghan allies will continue. We will not be deterred by terrorists. We will not let them stop our mission. We will continue the evacuation. Scores of Afghans were also killed and wounded. Thousands are hoping to get out of the country by the end of the month, with many living in makeshift camps outside the airport. The terror group ISIS-K claimed responsibility. The threat from ISIS is extremely real. General Frank McKenzie oversees the evacuation effort. We believe it is their desire to continue those attacks, and we expect those attacks to continue. The Taliban controls the outer perimeter, and the U.S. has asked them to clamp down. We told them you, you need to continue to push out the security perimeter. We've identified some roads that we would like for them to close because we assess the threat of a suicide born vehicle threat is high right now. More than 100,000 people have been flown out of the country since August 14th, including most of the 6,500 Americans living there. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News.